Hello everyone. Today I'm going to cover a topic related to rotor dynamic instability. The rotor dynamic instability typically causes large vibration which reduces the life of the machine. So it is important to understand what causes the instability and how we could avoid this. First thing we should understand is that what causes the instability in a rotor system which leads to a large vibration in the machine. The instabilities can be induced by various energy sources such as bearings, seals, impellers, fit between the parts, shaft, hysteresis, and etc. As shown in this list, there are many factors that can cause rotor dynamic instability. But for today's video, let's focus on the instability caused by fluid filling bearings. The instability caused by fluid filling bearing is due to self-excited vibration arising from the fluid filling forces. This phenomenon is known as oil whirl or oil whip and the frequency spectrum signal is shown on the right. To understand this phenomenon, let's consider a lightly loaded journal bearing and the pressure induced flow is assumed negligible. When a fluid is contained within an annular region between two cylinders that are rotating relative to each other, the fluid is set into motion. As the fluid moves, the fluid next to the rotor will have the same velocity as the surface of the rotor. While the fluid next to the bearing or a stationary housing will have zero velocity. So there will be an average fluid velocity profile in the bearing, which is slightly less than half of the rotating speed due to an internal shear, friction losses, and the geometry of the bearing. As rotor speed increases, the tangential force becomes stronger. And these forces tend to add energy towards the process direction, which causes large vibration. Here is an example of how the vibration signals would look like in the waterfall plot. X-axis is the frequency and the Y-axis is the machine speed. With increasing rotating speed, omega, 1x vibration due to imbalance will also track the machine rotating speed as shown in the figure. The subsynchronous vibration, slightly less than 0.5x, is due to fluid forces generated by the fluid spinning inside the bearing. If the subsynchronous frequency equals the rotor's first critical speed, then the mechanism transitioned from oil whirl to oil whip. The oil whip is much more severe condition, which the energy from the subsynchronous vibration excites the first bending mode of the rotor. To avoid or fix this rotor dynamic instability condition, there are four typical solutions that you could apply to your design improvement. First is to increase the stiffness of the rotor, which enables you to operate at a higher speed before you encounter oil whip condition. Second is to use orthotropic bearing stiffness, which means you have a different bearing stiffness along the X and Y direction. This can be achieved by implementing pressure dam bearing or fixed arc bearing. The third suggested solution is to increase damping. You could increase damping by improving the bearing geometry, such as increasing the bearing length. The fourth solution is of course reducing the destabilizing forces. The tilting pad journal bearing tends to reduce the destabilizing forces. So you could replace your journal bearing with tilting pad ones. But if you are not operating your machine over two times the frequency of the first bending mode, the tilting pad journal bearing can be an overkill. Because you will not encounter oil whip condition, which is more severe condition than the oil whirl. 
and or you could redesign the seals to reduce the destabilizing forces. Today I've covered the rotor dynamic instability caused by a bearing. I hope you find this information useful. This is all I have for you today. If you like this video, please subscribe my channel and thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video.